G'day guys, it's Sam here and today I want to talk to you about going bush. The do's and don'ts of going away on an adventure. I get asked all the time questions about different parts of my trip and, and what to take and what to plan for and what not to plan for, what to do, what to not do. So, quick rundown of the things that I think are important and the things I think that aren't important. First thing I would say is to not make a plan. Because honestly, that nine week trip we did, we had you know, we had final destination was a tip of Cape York, but in between there, we didn't plan anything. We didn't plan a route, nothing. We were just like, mm, we'll go this way as we went, find, you know, you talk to people and find out where there's like waterfalls or things to look at or mountains or whatever, and you'll always find things. So if you make a plan and then you miss your deadlines and you didn't get to this campsite on a certain date, you're gonna start like, you know, trying to catch up almost. So if you don't make a plan, then you'll never be disappointed and it's gonna be like the best time of your life. So, you know, that's the first thing I'd say. Second thing I would say, vehicle preparation. Now, you're probably all over this because, you know, most guys build their cars for a certain trip. But the main thing is like, you gotta think about how long you're gonna be off the grid. So you'll obviously have supply of water and all like that. But you gotta think batteries and stuff because we had a couple of batteries go flat. So, you know, if you can be, away from civilization for up to two weeks. And one of the important things that people don't realize is, you know, your battery might be deep cycle, but as it goes flat, you need a solid day's drive and then charge it up again. If you've had two nights in a camp spot, and you've got like a fridge and a freezer going, your battery's gonna drain itself. And it, and a quick, you know, run, run of the car so the alternator charges or just drive around for an hour or so, it's not gonna do it, you need a solid, you know, days, like 600 Ks of driving to charge that battery back up. So keep that in mind, whether you want, you know, maybe a couple of batteries or, or you know, a solar panel is always good. So, you know, that's the other thing I'd think about is just that vehicle preparation and take spares <laughs> because what you don't take, you're gonna need. I guarantee you that because I pretty much took, you know, one of everything on my car bar, like maybe a spare radiator. Take, it's better to take things and not need it than not take something and be in the middle of nowhere and need it. So, might as well take what you can. My third thing, research where you're gonna go. And I'll say this because hermits are a very important thing, especially in the national parks in Australia. You might think, oh, there's no one around, just camp there, but you really should pay for your camping. It's a small fee, you just go online. Pay pass, blah, 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 whatever, set up your account. The other thing with the research is there's a lot of places up north that you can't actually have alcohol with you if you're gonna stay there. So I forget what they call it, but pretty much need proof of your final destination that's gonna like that's gonna be somewhere that allows alcohol so you can carry it through that zone. So just keep that in mind. If you got a few cartons with you and you get pulled up, just make sure you've got proof of where you're gonna end up because they can take it off you. Number four, boss. Something I get asked all the time, every day. How much did your trip cost? So <laughs> it's a bit hard from my side because I had a passenger, we split the cost and obviously the V8 petrol chewed the juice. So I spent, I think it was nine grand all up. So that was 15,000 kilometers of driving, um, nine weeks of food. You know, the average fuel price was about the same as diesel. So I was paying unleaded the same amount as the guys with the dealers. I was using, so 25 liters per hundred was my uh, fuel usage. So, you know, that's, take that into account if you're trying to like sort yours out and you've got your diesel that uses maybe 16. So a thousand bucks a week is plenty of a budget, I'd say. Like you're gonna spend all on your normal grocery stuff. You just freeze everything. I'd say make things at home, chuck it in your freezer, like little Ziploc bags make a pasta or like some noodle dish or whatever, freeze it and that shit will last like the whole trip and you just reheat it on the pan. It's like the best thing mum ever did for me when I went. Number five, now take a camera. Everyone probably does this now anyway, like your phones have pretty good cameras these days. If you take a good camera, Australia has like got some of the best landscape in the world. So get those shots and those memories. Even if you're not like into your photography at the moment, as long as you have those quality images later on when you go back and you want to like make a print actually. I've got one in my room, hold on. Oh, 
So now this was a photo that I took when we pulled over at uh, Ayers Rock and I was like, you know, the boys had gone ahead and I said, nah, quickly get the camera out. I just want a shot with the rock in the background. Didn't think much of it and Liam, my passenger, was like, nah, get the good camera out, get the Canon, might as well take it properly. So he took the shot and got back and like, you know, last month or so, I was like flicking through, oh, this looks all right. Gave it a quick edit and brought out these colors and it looked so vibrant. I was like, nah, I've got to get this printed. So there's a shops online, there's plenty of places do these. 50 bucks and I got like three of them printed off, different images. Whack it on the wall and it looks mint. And drones are getting popular as well. I had a drone, bought it at the start of the trip, sold it at the end of the trip for pretty much what I paid for it. So it was the best investment. You just get these epic shots and you look like you're actually not bad behind a camera. I'd definitely be looking at one of them if you want to make a little clip or an adventure trip shot or whatever. Number six, the last thing I want to say is just to enjoy every moment. Don't get caught up in the photography or video side of things. Like, you know, you don't want to experience this whole thing looking behind a screen like, oh, I better get this shot. Take a photo and then put it down and actually enjoy the moment. Remember why you're there. Remember that you've gone on this trip for yourself and for the memories. So thanks guys, if you have any more questions about this, leave a comment below and I'll probably do another video in a few weeks time if there's a whole bunch that people wanna know about. These are just the general things that people have been asking me. So, you know, try and answer what I can. This will hopefully answer to the masses any questions that you had. So yeah, hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.